Okay, let's take a look at this area of rectangle function. Um, area of rectangle has two arguments now. The first one is length and the second one is width, right? And just in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, this is my command area. This is where I'm going to store my global variables. This is um, just kind of a piece of scrap paper where I'm going to put my global variables. And output area is where I'm going to do any printing that I happen to do. Okay. So if I run the area of rectangle function, notice by the way that I did remember to load the program already, and I run it on 3 and 4. You'll see it says the area of a 3 by 4 rectangle is 12. That's what we'd expect. Let's just trace this and see what happens. If I run area of rectangle, right, on 3 and 4, then I get a new piece of scrap paper for my function. The function is going to be called area of rectangle. And when I look at my function, it has two arguments. The first thing that happens, you always look in the parentheses and say, do I have any arguments? I have two. So that means I need to have two boxes for variables here on my scrap paper. The first one is called length, and that one has the value, let's see, first thing here is a 3, so length gets a 3, so that's going to be an int value 3. The second argument is called width, and that got the value 4, so we have to say it's called width. It's also of type integer, and it has a value of 4. Okay, great. So now we can start running our program. And this says print the area of a length by width. All right, we can print that. The area of a, there's a comma, it says length. So we look in on our scrap paper for this function. We've got a box, it's called length, so its value is three, so we can put that three in. And then by, it says now print width. Well, in our area of rectangle function, we also have a box called width, so we'll print that four. Okay, and then there's this comma here, which means you can hit a space, but don't go to the next line. Another print statement. It says print rectangle is. Okay, there's another comma, so we're going to do a space, but no new line. Oh, look at that. Area gets length times width. Okay, we look in our area of rectangle scrap paper. Do we have a box called area already? Nope. Okay. Okay, so it says area gets length times width. It looks in this area of rectangle function box and says, huh, I don't have any boxes called area already. I don't have any variables called area, so I guess I need a new variable. And it always makes a new variable here if it doesn't find one in the function it's in. So this variable is going to be called area. It's type, well, I don't know, let's do the math. Um, length is an integer, right? And width is an integer, so we're doing just integer math, so it's going to be an integer. And the value, well, area gets length times width. Let's figure out length times width, 3 times 4, that's 12. So put that into the area box, so it's a value 12. And then we go to the next line of code. It says print area and then a period. So we print area. Well, we look in the area of rectangle function on the scrap paper to see what we've got. We have something called area, its value is 12, and then we print a space and then a period. And we're done. Trust me on this. This is the end of the function. When we hit the end of the function, we crumple up that scrap paper. Everything that was in here is now gone. Scrap paper gone, done. Okay. All right, so now suppose we want to run it again. Let's suppose that we make a variable called, I don't know, big gets 6. I could say area of rectangle big 5. And if I run that, area of a 6 by 5 rectangle is 30. That's ex what we would expect. Let's just see how that works. So I say run area of rectangle on big, oops, wait a minute. I said big gets 6. Sorry about this. As soon as I said big gets 6, I got to make a new variable here. It's called big. It's a type integer. Its value is 6. Okay. So now that I say run area of rectangle on big and 5, I get a new piece of scrap paper. It's called area of rectangle is the name of my function. My function, I look at the arguments. I've got two arguments there, length and width. So I need to automatically give myself two new boxes for variables. So I've got, here's one. Two, and the first one is called length, 
And what value goes into length? Well, whatever's first here, so big. Okay, so that was big from my global variable, so big is an int of 6, so length is an int of 6. And the second one is width. Width is going to get this 5, so width is of type int, and it gets value 5. Okay, let's keep going. Now we start to run our function once you've got all your arguments done. Print the area of a length by width. Okay, we can do that. The area of, uh, all right, what's my length? Look in here, length is 6. By, what's my width? Width is 5. We got a comma here, so just do a space and then go to the next line of code. Print rectangle is, all right, rectangle is, and then a space. All right, we got area gets length times width. So we do the right-hand side, put the answer in the left. Length times width, what's length times width? Uh, length 6, 5, 6 times 5 is 30. We're going to put that into area. I check, do I have an area box in here? Nope, no area box in here, so I need to make a new box. This box is called area. It's going to get that 30, which is an int, okay? And now it says print, well print area, area was 30, and then comma, so I get a space and then a period, and no comma, so I'm going to hit a new line. All right, cool. We leave the function, we cross everything out. All right, so here's the super tricky part. Suppose I say um, length gets 8, all right? length gets 8. So that means that in the global scope, in the command area, we're going to get another variable. Its name is length, its type is int, and its value is 8. Okay, fair enough. Now if I run area of rectangle, let's run it on big and length. The question is what happens, right? And the answer is exactly the same thing as before. This guy is going to get the first one, which is big. This one is going to get the second one, which is called length. Okay, we'll be fine. So let's run it. We run the area of the rectangle function. Let's watch it happen first. It does what I said it would do. All right, so we run the area of rectangle function, and what happens? We have a new piece of notebook paper, right? The other ones are gone. They were scratched, right? They were crumpled up and gone. I mean, we can even delete them if you want. They're gone old junk, right? Okay, they're all gone. We've got a new piece of paper. This function name is called area of rectangle. And what have we got? Well, we look at the arguments here, length and width. Okay, oops, I better get rid of these guys. Those were left over from those notebook papers. Sorry about that. So um, we need a new variable called length and a new variable called width. Width, okay, so length. Length is the first argument, so it gets whatever we called it with first. That was big. Okay, big in the command area has the value 6. It's an integer, so length gets, oops, an integer, number 6. Width in here, well, width is the second thing there, so width gets the second argument there, which is called length. So width in our function is going to get this guy length from the global variable, so that's an integer of value 8. Phew. Okay, and now we get to start running the function. You can't start running the function until you do that. So now we say, it says print the area of, uh, what's length? Well, we look in our area of rectangle box. Length is 6. Okay, 6 by what's width? Width is 8. All right, area of a 6 by 8, get space because we have this comma here, right? And stay on the same line, all right, print rectangle is, and then it says area gets length times width, all right? We do the right-hand side, put it in the left-hand side. Length times width, uh, well, that's this length times this width because we always look on the scrap paper for the function we're running. So 6 times 8 is 48, so 
area gets 48. Oops, we need a new box for area because there's no box for area in it. Fair enough. So it's called area. It's type int. It has a value of 48. And so area gets 48. Good, we're done. And now print area and then a period. So we print area, no quotes, so we look for the box, 48, space because of the comma, period, no comma at the end, so we hit new one. All right, cool. Um, and let's just try one more. This one you should be able to, oh, sorry, left the function. Hope you guys were yelling at me. You leave the function. What do you do when you leave the function? You cross everything out. If your cross out would go to the front. Cross everything out. This scrap paper, you're throwing that scrap paper out. It's done. We're not going to use it anymore. Okay. Let's run it one more time. And let's run it area of rectangle with length and length. Right? Not going to cause us a problem. You guys totally know how this works, right? Is that what you expected to happen? We make a new box, a new, sorry, a new piece of scrap paper for our function. All right. The function is called area of rectangle. Okay, we look up here, we look right here at the definition line for our function, and it says a rectangle has a length and a width, so we better make some boxes for those variables, length and width, all right? The first variable is called length, second variable is called width, all right, what goes into length? Well, length from the command area, length from the command area was 8, okay, so that value 8 and the type int. And what goes into width? Well, eh, length again from the command area. Length from the command area was 8. So we say int 8 and off we go. Print the area of a 8 by 8 angle. Ooh, 8 by 8 space comma. Next line rectangle is comma, so we do the space, leave the, the flashing cursor is right there, so that's where our next thing is going to get print. Area gets length times width, okay, length is 8, width is 8, 8 times 8 is 64, we don't have a box for area yet, so we got to make one, area, 8 times 8 is 64, that's an int. Next line, print area, 64, comma period, and no comma, so we have a new line, we leave the function, cross everything out, okay, we're done, I ain't got enough for you.